Assalamu alaikum sir. I am Salat Mustafiz Khan, ID78, and I will be talking about what business law are and its impact on businesses and economy. Now, to encapsulate what business law are, it is a body of law that governs um, entities and commercial enterprises. Now, our work was to find out what business law is and how they set the business framework for all businesses and whether or not it does the same across all economies. To do that, we had to understand all the different types of business laws and what they had, what their impact was on businesses and economies. So we studied the law of contract, which is the agreement between two or more parties, the law of offer and acceptance, the law of free consent, the law of legality of object and consideration, and lastly, the law of partnership. Now, after doing that, we also had to find out whether the law did the same for all economic systems. Now, in our current world, there exist three major economic systems, which is the command economic system, the market economic system, and finally, the mixed economic system. After studying these three economic systems, we have found out whether or not the business law sets the business framework for all three of these, and if it has the same impact on businesses and economies universally. Now my teammate will carry on with the rest of the presentation and understand how we have reached our conclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Sadat, for giving me the floor. I'm Mawan Said Rafi, Roll 64. A contract is a voluntary agreement between two or more parties, which is legally enforceable. In case of most business transactions, there is a contract. Contracts can be either expressed or implied. A contract ensures that resources are allocated the most efficient way possible. The law of contract facilitates efficient contracting. Here, if the other party fails to perform their part of the contract, then this case would be enforceable by law to compensate damages. A transaction cost is an expenditure incurred in making a contract such as effort and money spent on negotiation, lawyer expenses, etc. Higher transaction costs can reduce the party's expected profit from making a contract. Contract law can reduce transaction costs by providing default rules. Now, human beings are rational and often make wrong decisions. So contracts made by a party can be incorrect and inefficient. In these cases, the third economic function of contract law comes to play, which is to deter inefficient behavior in relation to a contract. Uh, the basis or agreements of a contract may change with the passage of time. A contract could be inefficient at any point of time and be risky and harmful for business. The fourth economic function of contract law discourages ineffectual performance of a contract or, in other words, encourages efficient breach of a contract. Now, lack of information may instigate the parties into entering an inefficient contract which can be harmful both economically and financially for the business. The last but not least economic function of law creates incentives for the parties to share private information for the contract making and ensures transparency. In contrast, the risk of non-performance doesn't help entering beneficial exchanges. To eliminate this risk of law, uh, the law of contract plays a huge role. It secures the cooperation and morality of the parties uh, bounded by the contract. Now passing the floor to my next teammate, Abhishek. Thank you, Mahwan. Assalamu alaikum, sir. This is Abhishek Chaudhary, ID68. And today I'm going to talk about the law of offer and acceptance. Offer and acceptance are generally recognized as essential requirements for the formation of a contract. And analysis of their operation is a traditional approach in contract law. In simple words, offer and acceptance is the process by which a buyer and a seller creates a legal contract. The, this process begins when a potential buyer makes an offer, then the seller can accept it or reject it and make a counter offer. Then the buyer has the same options. An offer is a, straight, is a statement of the terms on which the offerer is willing to be bound. It might be expressed through words or implied by actions. Either way, an offer must be capable of forming a legal relationship, which includes a definite time period and certain terms and conditions communicated to the offering. An acceptance must be an absolute and unconditional acceptance of all the terms of an offer. And it is only contractually valid if the proposal to which response is made is an offer capable of acceptance, which must be properly communicated to the offering party within the prescribed time limit. 
Breach of any of these terms and conditions will result in revocation, including either not forming a legal contract or termination of an existing contract. So to summarize, when one party accepts the other party's offer or counter offer and communicates that acceptance to the offering party, a contract is created. Suppose I'm going to sell my car and I enlist it in a website for BDT 10 lakh. They are a fine Mr. Korim who is interested in buying it. Mr. Korim says over a phone call that he wants to negotiate. We meet the next day and upon a short discussion, he gives me a counter offer of 9 lakh taka. I accept the offer and hand him over the legal documents of the firm. Here, a contract has been made legally between me and Mr. Korim. The law of offer and acceptance being the initial criteria to form a contract certainly has a significant contribution in the formation of businesses and in economic growth. From the ages of trade craft to modern day investment markets, offer and acceptance remains as an integral part of any business that is bound to a contract and has a great socioeconomic impact on our lives. With that, I'd like to hand over the presentation to my next teammate, Iftikhar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Abhishek, for giving me the floor. Assalamu alaikum, sir. This is Iftikhar Bin Yusuf, Road 72, and I'm here to talk about the law of free consent. Now, what is free consent? When two parties willingly agree to bind into a contract, being aware of its terms and conditions, having a mutual understanding of the base subject matter of the argument is free consent. Now that we know what is the law of free consent, we shall now discuss how violating the law of free consent acts as an impediment to the growth of an economy and a scenario where such violations, if stopped, can facilitate its progress, upholding the rights and liberties of its various industries. The first step is defined coercion when contracting. In our country, some businesses are coerced into unprofitable contracts by some nefarious people who hold positions of power in the society. Such an arrangement is mostly perpetrated by threats of physical violence, revoking the license to conduct an enterprise, etc. This can be avoided if one is aware that such contracts are voidable. This will not only help the businesses to remain ethical, but also incentivize them to have high standards when it comes to the relationships they have with their supply chains and employees. The second one is repelling undue influence. Abuse of influence is gravely damaging the banking sector of an economy. Bankers are forced to reschedule influential defaulters fearing unemployment. In a developing country like ours, where the financial structures have not matured like the other developed countries, the nefarious the risk management for bankers has become increasingly difficult. The nefarious practices and undue influences of investors adds to the problem. If strong regulations and prosecutions are not in place, eradicating such a disparaging influence some people have over others, our economy or any economy for that matter will in inevitably crumble. Third, the mischief of misrepresentation. The destiny group embezzled around 4,000 crore taka in a Ponzi scheme in the name of multi-level marketing. Another e-commerce platform, Evali, has been accused of embezzlement and misrepresentation. In an economy where such misrepresentation is allowed to fester, the people lose trust in the newer enterprises, whereas a fraud-free market can do leaps and bounds for its growth. Businesses often claim to have innocently misrepresented to vindicate themselves from their malpractices. But it is viable to eradicate fraud if there is proper implementation of business laws in an economy. Last of all, understanding mistake of laws and facts. Knowledge of mistakes of laws and facts ensures accountability for every business, big or small, to remain cognizant of the relevant rules of law pertaining to operations of its trades and contracts. Understanding mistake of facts can make every business more aware of the conditions and bindings made in their contracts. That's all from me. Handing over the floor to my next teammate. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Stekar. I'm Safin, Rule 74. I am going to talk about the impact of laws of legality of object and consideration on business and economy. So, according to Section 23, every argument of which the consideration or object is unlawful is void, and the consideration or the object of an agreement is unlawful in the following cases. If it's forbidden by law, if it is of such nature that if permitted, it would defeat the provisions, if it is fraudulent, if it involves or implies injury to the person or property of another, if the court regards it as immoral, if the court regards it as opposed to public policy. Now the agreements opposed to public policy are trading with an alien enemy, agreements interfering in the course of justice, agreements for stifling criminal prosecution, maintenance and champerty, traffic in public offices, agreements creating an interest opposed to duty, agreements unduly restraining personal liberty, agreements interfering with parental duties, marriage brokerage agreement, and miscellaneous cases. 
All these laws have immense impact on both business and economy. These laws protect business and economic practices, trade and commerce from unfair competition, discourage socially undesirable conduct and inappropriate ju uh, judicial practices, enforce the contract and maintain law and order in the business and community economy, doesn't allow carrying out illegal acts through the legal agreements, saves time and effort of the court from engaging in such unintended dealings, and helps to keep good, good morals in a society and a state. So this is how this business law saved the business framework for economic society. Proper implementation of such laws will help in the growth of the economy. That's all from my side. Now I'd like to hand over the presentation to my next to me. Thank you. Thank you, Safin, for giving me the floor. I am Yifat Paske Shairi, ID76, going to discuss about the laws of partnership in business and economy. First comes the legal entity. A partnership has no separate legal entity apart from its members. The firm and the partner are not separate from one another. Then comes the agreement. A partnership is the result of an agreement between persons which may be written or oral. Then comes the third point, that's number of partners. There must be at least two persons to form a partnership and limit to the number of partners is 20. Then comes the existence of business. The partners must agree to carry on a business. Then the fifth point is sharing of profit. The agreement between the parties must be to share the profits of the business and distribution will be done according to that. Then comes the sixth point, that's unlimited liability. The liability of all the partners is unlimited in case of firm's debt. Then comes the seventh point, that's capital. The capital of the firm is supplied by all the partners. In some cases, not necessary to contribute the capital by all of them. Then comes the eighth point, that is good faith. A partnership business is based on mutual confidence and trust of the partners. Then comes the, an important point, that's management. Every partner can take part in the conduct and management of the business of the firm. Then comes the 10th point, that's control. Control depends on the terms of the firms. All partners take an active part in the conduct of the business. The next point is transfer of interest. Shares cannot be transferred to outside outsider without the consensus of all the partners. Then comes the last and important point, that's duration. Partnership continues at the will of part at the will of the partners as long as they want. So partnerships plays an important role in finding effective ways to find the best for their organization. A partnership business contributes to economic growth and development of themselves. It creates unemployment opportunities, hence reducing the unemployment problems. It has effective role in mobilization of rural savings. It helps government in the provision of social amenities to the people in both urban and rural areas. Partnership can undoubtedly bring great changes in social economy, so we should focus more on to develop economic condition of the country. With this, I'd like to conclude my speech here. I'm handing over the presentation to my next teammate. Thank you all. Thank you, Shaidi. I am Masha IDT, and I'm here to talk about the impact of business laws in a common economy. A command economy is where the central government makes all the economic decisions. It doesn't rely on the laws of supply and demand that operate in a market economy. A command economy also ignores the customs that guide in a traditional economy. In a command economy, by law, the government creates a central economic plan. The five-year plan sets economic and societal goals for every sector and region of the country. Shorter-term plans convert the goals into actionable objectives. According to the law, the government allocates all resources. It tries to use the nation's capital, labor, and natural resources in the most efficient way possible. The central plan sets the priorities for the production of all goods and services. The law imposes quota and price controls. The business law aids in the government owning monopoly businesses. These are deemed essential to the goals of the economy. The government further creates laws and regulations and directives to enforce the central plan. Business laws and regulations aid the economy by allowing it to, one, manipulate its resources, and two, by transforming an entire society to conform to the government's vision by nationalizing companies to placing workers in new jobs after a governmental skill assessment. The disadvantages include the fact that, number one, change is constant in the society, and two, there is a lack of risks and innovation in the common economy. Examples of command economy can be seen in the modern world China and Cuba. In China, after World War II, the then leader created a society ruled by communism. He enforced a strictly planned economy. The current leaders continue to create five-year plans to outline economic goals and objectives. 
in Cuba, Fidel Castro's 1959 revolution installed communism and a planned economy. The Soviet Union subsidized Cuba's economy until 1990. The government is slowly incorporating market reforms to spur growth. Over to my next teammate, Taji. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, sir. I'm Taji Ferdin. Today, I'll be presenting the impact of business loss on market economy. Now, what is market economy? Market economy is an economic system in which economic decisions and the pricing of goods and services are guided by the interactions of a country's individual citizens and businesses. In a market economy, most economic decision making is done through voluntary transactions according to the laws of supply and demand. Business laws that have direct impact on market economy are business and competition legislation and business and labor market legislation. Now, how does business and competition legislation affect market economy? Competition law is a branch of law that promotes or seeks to maintain market competition by regulating anti-competitive conducts by companies. The primary purpose of competition law is to remedy some of the situations in which free market system breaks down. In 2012, the Competition Act was enacted in Bangladesh. Competition law prohibits businesses from entering into anti-competitive agreements, fixed prices, limit or control production or markets, share markets or sources of supply, and abusing a dominant position. Competition law benefits everyone, businesses, consumers, and the market economy as a whole. Now, how does business and labor market legislation affect the market economy? Labor law is a very body of law applied to such matters as employment, remuneration, conditions of work, trade unions, and industrial relations. Bangladesh's employment law is regulated by the Act of 2006, Labor Act, and the 2015 Labor Rules. The main economic rationality for the existence of labor law is that there is an important market failure and asymmetry in the bargaining power between employers and employees, which is stronger for employers. Labor law tips the balance of power in bargaining so that the position of the worker is enhanced. If there was no labor law, employers could have exploited labor in exchange of minimum wage. But labor law let workers bid their services at the highest possible wages, thus helping the market economy as a whole. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Handing over the presentation to my next team, Arnold. Thanks, Tazi, for giving me the floor. This is Arnold Shaha, ID88. I will be talking about importance of business law in business and economy. In terms of the importance of business law, the basic is business law serves as a way to maintain order among businesses, brands, and companies alike. As companies are one of the most important social and economic powers in an advanced economy, an efficient corporate legal framework is of considerable importance. Business law plays a vital role in regulating business practices in our country. My next point is, what is mixed economy? A mixed economy is an economic system in which both the state and the private sector direct the economy, reflecting char characteristics of both market economies and planned economies. Moving to the next slide, uh, I will be talking about how mixed economy system works. A mixed economic system takes on both the characteristics of market economy and a planned economy. A mixed economic system protects, uh, protects uh, private property and allows a level of economic freedom in the use of capital, but also allows for governments to interfere in the economics activities in order to achieve social aims. Impact of business law in mixed economy. Business law can have positive impact on growth by removing certain market failures and improving economies efficiency. Regulations can have a negative impact also on growth by creating substantial compliance costs, undesirable market distortions or unintended consequences. Thanks, sir. That's all from me. Now I would like to hand over the presentation to my next fellow teammate, Anath Tassin Rafi. Hello, sir. This is Anav Tassin Rafi, Role 82, and I'm going to conclude our presentation by mentioning the findings of a research paper and a concluding overview. Findings. Number one, contract law is a justified use of the state's resources because it helps everyone to become better off. The law of free consent acts as a watchman to uphold the rights and interests of everyone included to a contract, making prudent expectations where required. Number three, law of free consent provides rights for the aggrieved to void contract and claims damage if such a crime is proved to be committed against them in the court of law. 
Number four, to bring a case within the purview of section 23, it's necessary to point out the thing of the agreement or consideration of the agreement or the agreement itself is unlawful. Number five, to innovate in today's economy, partnership be partnerships between companies, accelerators can become our greatest opportunity. Number six, uh, common economy doesn't allow market forces like supply and demand to determine what how, and how much at, and at what price they should produce goods and services. Its goal is to allocate resources to maximize social welfare. Number seven, business and labor law does not let employer, employers exploit labor at the minimum wage and let workers bid their services at the highest possible wages. It has a direct impact on market economy. Number eight, government regulations affect how companies structure their businesses, where companies decide to locate, and how they classify their employees, and a thousand other things. Number nine, and the last one, the advantages of a mixed economy include efficient production and allocation of resources as well as an improved social welfare. To conclude, the goal of business law is to instill order. They are enacted to ensure the businesses follow the certain guidelines that will force them to maintain ethics, legality, and safety. In a sense, they pave a legal pathway for all businesses to follow, no matter how big or small. Therefore, they provide a the framework for businesses. And about economies of all societies, we see that there are three types of economic systems that exist across the present world. Business law helps in regulating the businesses. All businesses can run smoothly in, and in accordance to one another because of business law. This regulation of businesses in turn has an impact on the economy as well. That is what we have found through our research in writing this paper. So in conclusion, it, it, it can very well be said that business law does, does indeed create the business framework for economies in every society. Thank you, sir.